The CDC reports that black Americans between the ages of 18 and 49 are twice as likely as whites to die from heart disease. It has also been reported that black Americans ultimately wait longer for life-saving treatments, such as initial EKGs. Can you imagine, on top of every emotion, stress, and worry that comes with a tragic diagnosis, having to worry about not even having the chance to survive just due to your skin color? As of late, the world has started to grapple with the fact that racism and inequities are entrenched in multiple systems in America today, and unfortunately, healthcare is no exception. There have been innumerable studies revealing how bias permeates the healthcare field, and this cannot be tolerated. I urge everyone to fight against this injustice. There are multiple possible ways to do so. But to combat this racism, we must first understand the prevalence and depths of all these forms of prejudice in our society. So here's the major issue with the racism experienced at magnitudinal levels by marginalized groups. Historically, as a legacy of African enslavement, racism has affected the population on multiple domains, one specifically being a systematic disinvestment in both public and private sectors within segregated black neighborhoods. This has resulted in under-resourced healthcare facilities with fewer clinicians, making it more difficult to recruit experienced and well-credentialed primary care providers, thereby affecting access and utilization to healthcare. To put all that in perspective for you, imagine you had a classmate who was a young black student born to disadvantaged parents who happened to be raised in a primarily black community. Due to multiple historical institutions put in place long before the student was born, the nearest hospital to him is an hour away. Suddenly, the student starts to feel constant sweating and chest pains, and they wonder if it's a heart issue or a panic attack, and they have no way of knowing, nor can they get proper treatment because they do not have access to a funded hospital. They can't move their family only for this reason, meaning that solely for their race, an uncontrollable factor, their life itself is threatened. In what manner is this fair? How difficult this must be for them and for you to not even know this classmate was struggling. Even in terms of insurance, the Affordable Care Act had the purpose of making more people eligible for Medicaid federally. However, many U.S. states opted out of this eligibility expansion. 46% of black working age adults live in those states. That means for living within one's culture, being a part of a certain race in a certain community suddenly limits their access to health care. We cannot blame one's choice of geographical location for their deteriorating health. Based on the way our society is set up, there will be underprivileged marginalized groups dispersed in several areas. So no matter what, we must prioritize their health as much as we prioritize anyone else's. Taking that black student as an example once again, if he lived in a state where he didn't have access to those Medicaid benefits, does his life not deserve to be valued just as much as someone who does have access to health care insurance? Is it not necessary that we issue more funding to those disadvantaged areas? Is this claim the truth? Well, yes, as I've established with evidence throughout, marginalized groups are experiencing racism in healthcare. In fact, black newborns die 250% more often than white newborns, and black mothers are three times more likely, due to or likely to die due to complications in childbirth than white mothers. We cannot allow such numbers to be our truth as Americans. So how do we combat this issue of one having to worry for their life due to how people perceive their skin color? The most effective method I can currently present is advocating for increased funding to inner city hospitals where minority groups tend to live. This would mean that either through the state, federal government, or private organizations, more money would be allocated to funding those hospitals in areas that are lacking in proper facilities, which is giving them an equal opportunity to improve their well-being. So why is the solution effective? Taking that student as an example once again, imagine he did have a funded hospital near him. He saw a competent doctor, he got the proper treatment, continued his education, eventually moved his family out of that disadvantaged area to a prosperous life, perhaps in an area accessible to healthcare insurance. This is the ideal, and it can be achieved with proper and well thought out funding. Is the solution fair, fair to all concerned? In terms of fairness, the marginalized groups would be receiving equal quality treatment as those in economically prosperous areas would. And for the doctors, it provides more job opportunities, perhaps heightening the economic status of the area and promoting diversity within the profession. The unfairness we see in America today is within the inability of one to obtain proper health care just due to their race. Is this solution beneficial to all concerned? The marginalized groups receiving treatment would benefit from a better quality of health, while the doctors in the area itself would benefit from the heightened economic status that funding hospitals provides due to the job opportunities. 
Does this solution build goodwill and better friendships? This action would generally improve relationships in society as a whole, as promoting diversity within healthcare would begin to reverse our implicit biases and perceptions against those marginalized groups that we are less exposed to, meaning that we form better relationships with black patients and doctors, improving their role in society and our character just for including all those who give value to the community. Initially, I stated that black Americans between the ages of 18 and 49 are twice as likely as whites to die from heart disease. Reflecting on that statistic, it's difficult to believe that due to uncontrollable factors such as generational bias and race, that one's life would be more at risk. However, with the evidence of structural racism at a national level, it is clear that this is a prominent issue to be addressed. I will admit it is difficult to reverse hundreds of years of historical institutions against marginalized groups, but if the effort is made to at least provide more funding to inner city hospitals where minority groups tend to live, some change will be made. Most importantly, we must make sure each person in our society is as well educated on this issue as we have just become and make it a collaborative effort to stand together against this injustice. It is only in that way, perhaps for the sake of that young black student, hopeful but not deserving of so much more stress, that one can truly make a difference in their community. Thank you.